Jennifer Hills, a novelist from New York City. Being an independent woman, she is on her way to a small village in Connecticut, where she has rented a cabin. Jennifer believes that the serenity and calm environment of the place will help overcome her writer's block. After a while, she pulls over at a shop, where she is greeted by a shady-looking guy named Earl. He appears to be the owner of the cabin she has rented. Earl hands her the keys and gives her directions to the place. However, Jennifer doesn't pay much attention to it and simply leaves after thanking him. Along the way, she is mesmerized by the beauty of the countryside, but she also gets confused as all the roads seem to be the same. So, she stops by a gas station to ask for directions. Three men are working there, and all of them appear to be perverts. From the moment Jennifer walks in, they begin staring at her in a creepy way. One of them named Johnny even attempts to hit on her, but Jennifer retaliates, causing him to stumble on a bucket of oil. This makes his friends, Andy and Stanley burst out in laughter. Jennifer also drives off, and Johnny is clearly embarrassed by the incident. In the next scene, Jennifer finally arrives at the cabin, which is near a beautiful lake. She then unpacks her belongings and makes herself comfortable. At night, she wastes no time and starts working on her new novel. By the looks of how she is writing, it appears that the isolated setting is helping her concentrate. The next morning, as Jennifer is relaxing by the lake, she hears some strange noises. But she chooses to ignore it, believing that it is some animal. However, in the evening, the noise continues to persist. This annoys Jennifer, as it is interfering with her work. So, she decides to investigate the source of the noise. After a while, she comes across a nearby shed, and the noise seems to be coming from inside it. However, when Jennifer enters, she finds nothing other than some tools, bottles of poison, and other machinery. Following this, she returns to her cabin and proceeds to begin her work. But as she lifts her laptop, she accidentally spills her drink. Now that Jennifer's clothes are dirty, she takes them off and washes them in the kitchen sink. Surprisingly, as she is doing so, an unknown person is seen recording her. The next morning, Jennifer jogs through the woods to keep herself fit. Along the way, she stumbles upon an abandoned house and decides to check it out. However, when she finds it to be creepy, she quickly runs away. After a while, she returns home and decides to take a shower but the taps appear to be clogged. So, she contacts the plumber for assistance. In the next scene, a guy named Matthew arrives to fix the problem. He appears to be suffering from a mental disorder, which makes it difficult for him to speak. Nonetheless, he gets the job done and the water starts flowing once again. This makes Jennifer so happy that she approaches Matthew and gives him a sudden kiss. The latter was not expecting this at all, so he runs away from there, without even taking his payment. The scene then cuts to the three gas station friends, who are hanging out by the lake. Stanley is recording their interactions on his video camera, as he has a passion for it. Just then, a panicked Matthew comes running towards them and explains how Jennifer kissed him earlier. Johnny thinks he's bluffing but Stanley says it might be true. He then shows them the secret footage of Jennifer he took the other night. Since she was barely dressed, the group believes that she wants to have some fun. So, they make an evil plan to confront her. Later that evening, Jennifer is awakened by some strange noises. Scared, she decides to check it and discovers a dead bird outside. When she returns to her room, she finds her laptop open and the wallpaper is of the three guys from the gas station. This makes her realize that her house has already been infiltrated. As Jennifer desperately screams for help, Johnny, Andy, and Stanley surround her from different directions. Then, Matthew is also dragged into the room to take part in the act. He doesn't want to be here, but because of peer pressure, he relents. The group then torments Jennifer by forcing various objects into her mouth. Johnny first inserts a gun and moves it around in a sensual manner. Andy also does the same but with a vodka bottle. At one point, when the guys are too relaxed, Jennifer takes advantage. She first strikes Andy's knee with the vodka bottle and then sprays Stanley with pepper spray. After this, she runs into the woods until she comes across Earl and the local sheriff, Storch. The latter calms her down and shows his badge, saying she is in safe hands now. He then sends Earl away and takes her back to the cabin on the pretense of confronting the bad guys. However, as soon as they reach the place, Storch changes his attitude. After finding weed and some alcohol on the table, he suspects that she is lying. Jennifer desperately tries to claim that she is the victim, but he does not listen. Instead, he asks her to turn around so that he can search her. Jennifer innocently compiles and this is when the evil sheriff starts running his hands down her waist. After they are all done, Jennifer is barely conscious. Still, she gets up and walks deeper into the woods, hoping that she finds someone. However, the evil men continue following her. They eventually corner her on a bridge and Storch is about to finish her off. But just then, Jennifer jumps into the river, seemingly committing the unthinkable. The group searches her for a while, but when they find no trace of her, they decide to erase all the evidence. They burn her stuff in the cabin and Stanley is also ordered to destroy the video footage. Following this, Storch returns home to his family as if nothing happened. Despite having a daughter himself, he did not hesitate to destroy another girl's life. The next day, he drives to Earl's shop and returns him the cabin's key, lying that Jennifer left without any notice. The movie then cuts to several weeks later, 
and the evil gang seems to have put the incident behind them. They are living normal lives, drinking beer and having fun. The only one who appears to be affected is Matthew, as he spends most of his time alone, regretting his actions. One day, as Johnny is chilling outside his house, Stanley comes running to him with some bad news. He reveals that someone has stolen his camera, and it had the controversial footage which he didn't destroy earlier. This sends Johnny into a fit of rage and he immediately attacks his friend for putting their lives at risk. That night, as Johnny is alone at home, a noise startles him. When he goes outside to check, he finds a dead bird. Thinking it's some kind of prank, he kicks the bird away and goes to sleep. However, the noise persists, prompting him to check again. To Johnny's shock, the dead bird has somehow resurfaced. It's almost as if someone is playing with him. Johnny angrily goes inside and grabs his gun but when he comes out, he finds Jennifer's slipper on his porch. This scares him so he furiously looks around the area, but finds no one. Elsewhere, as Storch returns home from work, his wife hands him a package, saying an unknown person delivered it. The sheriff believes that he's received an early Christmas gift but to his horror, it's actually one of Stanley's illicit tapes. Furious, he later confronts the group and demands an explanation. He believes that Stanley is doing this on purpose to destroy his family. However, Johnny defends his friend and brings out the slipper. He says that someone else is trying to mess with them. Realizing that they are in grave danger, Storch decides to eliminate all the loose ends. The first victim is Earl as he had seen Storch escorting Jennifer into the cabin on that fateful night. Then, the sheriff decides to finish off Matthew, as he was never on board with their plan. The scene then cuts to Matthew, who is outside the cabin, reflecting on his gruesome past. He still has not been able to recover from that incident. Just then, he hears a peculiar voice, so he rushes inside the cabin. As she searches every room, he accidentally loses his footing and falls down the stairs. When he regains consciousness, he is shocked to the core by what he sees. Jennifer sits on the couch, her eyes filled with anger. Matthew approaches her and profusely apologizes for his actions. At first, Jennifer pretends to comfort him but at an opportune moment, she ties a noose around his neck and seemingly chokes him to death. The next day, as Stanley and Andy are looking for Matthew, they come across the same abandoned house from earlier. Andy goes inside to check it while Stanley remains outside. Just then, the latter comes face to face with Jennifer, who has an evil grin on her face. He tries to lunge at her but gets caught in a bear trap that she had placed there. Hearing his screams, Andy rushes out of the house, but he is swiftly knocked out by Jennifer. Stanley also receives the same fate when she swings a baseball bat right across his head. In the next scene, he wakes up to find himself tied to a tree. Jennifer records the entire ordeal in his camera, just like he did with her. Then, she begins the torture process. At first, she shoves a dead rodent inside his mouth, making him puke. Then, she pierces his eyelids with fish hooks, making sure he cannot blink. For the final part, she cuts open a fish and spreads its intestines over his face. Soon, some ravens are attracted by the scent, and they begin pecking Stanley. Since he cannot move an inch, they pluck out his eyeballs, and he ultimately bleeds to death. After this, we are shown the condition of Andy, who is tied above a bathtub, which is filled with boiling water. He is supported by a few planks of wood. Jennifer removes one of them, so now he has no choice but to support his entire weight himself. After a few seconds, his body eventually gives in, and he dies a horrible death in the boiling water. The next day, Jennifer goes to the gas station wearing a seductive dress. As expected, Johnny falls for it, and when he approaches her, she knocks him out with a strike to the head. She then takes him to the same abandoned house and ties him up in a naked state. Following this, she begins torturing him. She pulls out his teeth one by one while reminding him of the gruesome acts he performed on her. She also shoves her gun down his throat, just like he did to her. However, instead of being apologetic, Johnny laughs maniacally. It's almost as if he has learned nothing from his mistakes. Seeing this, an enraged Jennifer grabs a pair of scissors and cuts his manhood. She then feeds it to him. Johnny screams in pain and eventually passes away due to extreme loss of blood. The next day, as Storch is driving, he receives a call from his wife. She mentions that their daughter's teacher is here and she wants to speak with him. When Storch learns that she is none other than Jennifer, he is taken aback. He turns his car around and rushes home, fearing for his family's safety. But by the time he arrives, he learns that the teacher has already taken their daughter to the park. Terrified, he rushes to the location and starts looking around. But out of nowhere, Jennifer ambushes him from behind and knocks him out. When Storch wakes up, he finds a rifle shoved inside his back. Jennifer pushes it even further, causing him to scream in pain. She then walks across the room and uncovers a man, who turns out to be Matthew. The guy is still alive, but he is unconscious. Jennifer ties a string around his hand, and the other end is attached to the rifle's trigger. She explains that if Matthew moves by even a bit, both of them will be killed. She then walks out of the room, leaving the men at the mercy of their own fate. Soon, Matthew awakens, and when he finds himself in this shady room, he immediately panics. This results in both of them being killed on the spot. The movie ends as Jennifer faintly smiles. She has finally completed her revenge.